Hi, my name is Josh with NorthshoreCommercialDoor.com. I'm here today to go over a complete installation of the ZAP Commercial Model Operator 8825-3-C. And please note that this particular installation video is not exclusive to this model operator. It does apply to any ZAP Commercial Model Operator uh, uh, for sectional overhead doors. Uh, so this will be very useful to a wide range of, of folks trying to uh, install uh, the ZAP commercial units for the first time. Now the tools required uh, for the installation are very minimal. Um, we're going to need a electric or cordless uh, drill, a quarter inch drill bit, um, and then uh, a range of screwdrivers, a flathead and a Phillips head, uh, medium size, and then also a very small flathead and Phillips head screwdriver, um, an Allen wrench, which actually uh, is included uh, with the operator, uh, so that will uh, help us uh, with our installation, and a pair of wire cutters and wire strippers, and also a socket or wrench set. Uh, to help us fasten things uh, throughout the installation. With that being said, we are going to go ahead and begin our installation here today. We're starting off with the ZAP motor assembly. Uh, right out of the box, as you can see, it comes pre-installed and we're going to go ahead and start with removing the mounting screw for the torque arm here. Once we get the screw uh, removed from the motor assembly, we're going to slide this motor assembly on either side of our door shaft and we're going to kind of mock up the bracket or torque arm that's included with the operator and try to test fit it here against our end bearing plate of our door and uh, figure out for sure where it's going to uh, be best suited for our application here today. Obviously you want to try to keep the motor assembly as vertical as possible uh, during the operation and uh, once you get everything mocked up you can go ahead and drill a hole with your quarter inch drill bit and fasten that to the end bearing plate. And something very important here during the installation is that you're going to want to go ahead and make sure that you tighten the bracket uh, that holds that ZAP motor assembly to your end bearing plate or horizontal track mount first. So fasten it there first and get it secure before you fasten it uh, to your spring shaft or door shaft or some folks call it a torsion shaft because it contains your torsion spring. So that is very, very crucial. If we do that uh, opposite, uh, we'll end up wearing out uh, the belt and bushings prematurely. As you can see with this installation here, I've got a spring shaft that's solid, one inch and a quarter inch keyway. So I've uh, slid the quarter inch keyway in to the zap drive pulley and that keyway is included with the operator. And once it's slid in there securely, I'm tightening the set screws down on the keyway, the other one just to the surface of the shaft, and then tightening the nuts surrounding it. While we're up at the motor assembly, we're going to go ahead and uh, plug in our motor harness cable, which is included with the operator. And uh, that will save us a trip back up the ladder or lift and uh, to do that later on. Our next step is with the black Bowden cable that protrudes down from the motor assembly. It does have an L-shaped bracket at the end of the black portion and uh, we want to mount that to the side of the vertical door track. And uh, what you want to do is pull down tight on that and then slide it up a couple inches so you have some slack in there. And then go ahead and uh, make your marks uh, with your quarter inch drill bit once again. And utilize the supplied bolts uh, and nuts and uh, fasten that to the track there. As you can see, uh, we do have uh, a nice amount of slack in that black cable, which is crucial so we get sufficient belt tension. Now what we're doing here in our application is we're actually uh, adding some chain. There's a bag of chain included with uh, all ZAP model operators and we're adding a few links so we can get our manual release lever closer to the ground so we're able to release the door from the opener in case of power loss. Uh, so what we've done here is we've added our chain, we've got our manual release lever in hand, and that's the red colored lever, and I'm kind of mocking it up here to the vertical door track and uh, figuring it out that uh, we want that position at about a 90 degree angle before we install it. 
So once we achieved the 90 degree angle, once again our quarter inch drill bit and a cordless drill, we're uh, drilling two holes and utilizing the uh, uh, supplied fasteners to fasten that to the vertical door track. And uh, we want to make sure that we get uh, uh, the lever nice and vertical or straight and that we uh, utilize the supplied hardware and get these very, very tight, nice and secure because there is a lot of leverage on this lever when we pull down on it and uh, get sufficient belt tension. So make sure you do secure those up uh, nicely there. As you see, um, once we get the hardware tightened up, when I pull down on the lever, you'll see it's at about a 90 degree angle when I start to feel a good amount of pressure on it and that's where we want it. Now in our application for video production purposes, we've already fastened our zap control box to our wall. Um, and you want to make sure you utilize the four holes um, in the corners of the control box to do that. Now our main power wire coming in uh, to the control box, I do have uh, three wires of course. Uh, this is your standard uh, 14 gauge wire and I'm stripping all the ends. We've got a black for positive, a white for neutral, and uh, a green for ground. And uh, our ground block on the circuit board of the ZAP operator is off to the left of the main uh, green colored power plug. So the green wire does not go in the green power plug, it uh, rather goes in the gray ground block off to the left and you can utilize any one of the three holes that you wish to do that. And uh, we're going to go ahead and, and terminate the green ground wire and uh, once we get that uh, uh, into the ground block uh, we'll go ahead with a, a uh, very small flathead screwdriver secure that wire down. Once we secure that wire, we're going to proceed on with our neutral, which is our white colored wire and our black wire. And you'll see I'm pointing out that the, uh, where you're going to terminate those, they're labeled on the green part of the circuit board live, which is your black or hot wire and the far left hole, and then your white or neutral, uh, which is noted by the letter N on the green part of the circuit board is in the next hole over. So uh, do not place them in the two far right hand holes of the green power plug but rather in the two far left holes and then go ahead and plug that back on and of course you want to make sure that you have your main power uh, shut off to uh, this this set of wires before you're uh, uh, wiring these things in now what we're doing next is we are terminating the end of our motor harness cable if you recall we plugged that in earlier up top at the motor assembly before we came down and uh, a little side note for you here is when you put the wires in, a lot of folks ask which wire goes where. Well, if you have the control box on the same side of the door opening as the motor assembly up top on the door shaft, uh, the blue wire always goes closest to the door and then turn your motor polarity will be correct. So as you can see, our blue wire is closest to the door here and uh, we've secured both of those wires in at the DC motor terminal plug and again those plugs are labeled right on the circuit board and uh, we're plugging that plug back in so we've got our motor harness cable secure. Now our voltage selector switch, a lot of folks uh, uh, do miss that and uh, we went ahead and slid that uh, to read 115 voltage. Um, our next step here is uh, uh, we're installing the included photo cells or safety beams or photo eyes as some folks call them. A lot of names for these. Uh, but at any rate, uh, they do have to be installed with any ZAP operator or you have to stand and hold the close button in to get the door down. So uh, there's one for each side, a sending and receiving photo cell. We've mounted the brackets to the door jams, uh, you know, within that six inch range of the floor, brought our wiring up through the bottom three holes of the zap control box, which is very crucial. And we're stripping those wires. And one thing I'd like to note with photo cells on a Series 3 zap commercial model operator is you have to bring all four wires into the zap control box. That's very crucial. Uh, so two wires from each photo cell. You do not want to join them together beforehand. And where you terminate those wires at is in the far two right hand holes of the four hole plug at the top right hand corner of the circuit board. And as you can see here, it's right to the right of those uh, red or orange uh, block of dip switches. And basically, very simply, it's one wire going into each hole from each of the photo cells. So all said and done, there's two wires into each of those uh, uh, two holes and uh, tighten them down with your small flathead screwdriver and uh, re-plug that back into the control box. Um, 
Now that we got the PhotoWise wired up, uh, power to the operator motor harness cable, you'll see that we are uh, or have powered up the operator and we are running the door with the opener. Uh, the calibration process is a matter of running the door open and close two times and you'll see when we press the open button the red open light comes on and that's labeled OPNG for opening right on the green circuit board there and then also uh, uh, when it's closing there's a red closing light which is abbreviated by CLSNG on the circuit board so you can tell uh, which direction the, the door is running when you're looking at the uh, uh, red illuminated LED lights on the circuit board so that's one thing to verify now you'll notice here that uh, we've got two dials at the center of the circuit board towards the top. The one on the left is labeled closed sensitivity which affects how sensitive the operator is closing. The other one is labeled max power clamp which affects uh, how powerful uh, the operator is. So those are adjustments uh, um, that can be uh, achieved um, if need be. Now you'll see here that we have an external radio receiver um, that we've decided to install with this operator. And I should note that any model, any brand external radio receiver will wire uh, to the ZAP commercial model operator. Uh, we've actually selected one of our own, North Shore Commercial Door branded external radio receivers called the RC-1. It's the external radio receiver set. Um, so we've got the receiver pictured here and uh, we've uh, terminated our wires into the external radio receiver. Um, actually uh, cut off the plug-in transformer as we're not going to plug it into an outlet, uh, which you could do. Uh, but in our case, the ZAP operator supplies power to external radio receivers, so we decided to uh, cut the transformer plug off and uh, wire it in direct. And uh, the remotes that we offer are pictured here with a visor clip, a uh, nice one-button remote. Uh, we do offer multiple button uh, transmitters as well. Uh, we took some Velcro here on the inside lid of the control box to Velcro the radio receiver inside the lid, give it a nice clean look, and you'll notice the accessory radio plug that I'm pointing out here uh, on the ZAP circuit board. It's a three-hole plug. Once again, it's labeled accessory radio, and that's for your external radio receiver to be wired in. And I've taken the, um, the, the power wires, and I've put one into 24 volt, which is the far left hole, and the other wire for common or ground into the far right hole labeled 0V which stands for 0 volts and um, our other pair of wires are our dry set of contacts from the RC1 which every external radio receiver has for example relay and common or relay and ground and those two wires actually relay is going to go to the center hole of this three hole plug labeled radio and the other one to, to 0 volts for common or ground now I've plugged the plug back into the circuit board. The blue light came on, which notes we have power to the external radio receiver. Uh, the red wire coming out the top is actually our antenna. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, show you here with the transmitter. Uh, we're going to go ahead and program the transmitter to the receiver. You'll see we're going to press the learn button, or coding, coding button as some folks call it. Give it one push and release. The color changes to purple. We either press and hold or press and release. Either way, the transmitter button and the color goes back to blue and codes the remote in. And as you can see, uh, as I was pushing the button to code it in, it actually activated the operator to run the door. So we did have success with this uh, uh, external radio receiver wiring first time around. And um, it's actually running the door for us with the transmitter or remote. So uh, but keep in mind, uh, um, uh, the North Shore Commercial Door Radio Receiver and Remote is something offered exclusively uh, from us. And uh, uh, it's a very attractive setup uh, that you folks can utilize with your ZAP commercial operators or any uh, commercial model or residential model operator if you wish. I would like to thank you folks uh, for watching here today. Uh, please note, if you have any questions, comments, uh, we certainly welcome those. You can reach us uh, toll-free, uh, 800-783-6112, or visit us on the web at northshorecommercialdoor.com. Thank you for watching.